Let's get into the Twitter files. Number eight dropping today. And just at a high level, this is Lee Fang, the investigative reporter from The Intercept. Now, The Intercept, interestingly, we've interviewed Dr. Shiva here on the show, uh, who, of course, has a lot to say about The Intercept um, and their involvement in, uh, you know, what the, what they were basically hiding and keeping from only reporting a portion of the story on the backdoor portal between Twitter uh, and uh, uh, and the federal government. Um, well, and- that's good context. Um, so we can sort of, while we go through this, remember that there may be more. Yes. But we still have a lot. Even if this is half the story, it's a big hunkin' story. Yeah. So, all right, let's dive into the Twitter files. So, yeah, let's dive into the start here. And so, Elon, oops, let me pull this up here. Sorry. All right. I- Actually, let me give you a little context, because what we're going to talk about today to, in today's Twitter files is specifically how the government has been using Twitter to create fake profiles in order to sow discord in foreign nations. I know that sounds crazy, but the Washington Post actually published a story about this back in September. We brought it to you when we were talking about the Iranian uh protests around the death of Masa Amini, because at the time the Ayatollah had said the United States is sowing discord with social media for a lot of these protests. And protesters were saying, no, that's the uh, regime being apologists. They're not listening to us. And we presented to you that maybe both were true. Based on this report, the United States government has actually been using social media to sow discord mostly in Arabic speaking places. Um, So, you know, the Pentagon with all of this, you know, has been telling us we want to counter misinformation. You know, we want to make sure there's no disinformation. Well, it's exactly the opposite. The Pentagon is perpetuating information. The report came from Graphica and the Stanford Internet Observatory. Here's just a little actually a little bit about it, what it was doing in Iran. The report found 21 Twitter accounts, two Facebook pages, five Facebook profiles, six Instagram accounts, all of these with names in Persian and content that mainly did so in Persian and about Iran. Um, Here is just one such U.S. government sham account. Now, this is on Facebook. Some of the users that were mentioned in this report are in fact mentioned in today's Ah. social media dump. So some of these have crossover. And in fact, Li Fang mentions this Graphica uh, Stanford Observatory report several times because it turns out to be true, because he can prove it from inside of Twitter. Now, what he also can prove, and we're going to see this, is that Twitter knows this. They don't think that these are... I want to say uh, authentic Arabic speakers coming from Arabic lands. So wanting they're fully to aware that these Twitter are fake accounts. Knows, okay. Yeah. So that is is that good context? That is good context, and yes. So again, Lee Fang, an re- investigative reporter at the Intercept, is the one who is now dropping this latest round, and I think it's kind of appropriate because again, Dr. Shiva, as Dean Thomas points out here in the chat, he says it's about time you guys report on Dr. Shiva. Oh, Dean. We've done two deep interviews with Dr. Shiva We've right here on the show. Done that. We have been one of the only on media, media organizations to cover Dr. Shiva's story. So we got that one, Dean. Thank you very much. Um, and of course, he slams The Intercept and Pierre Omidyar and all of it. So I think it's interesting. I really do that that The Intercept is the one specifically covering this psyops part of the Twitter file story. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm going to throw that out there and say that I think it's interesting that The Intercept is covering this portion of the Twitter files. Yes. We'll see, okay? Yeah, and and I want to say I know the difference between Persian and Iranian um, and Arabic. Thank you for pointing that out in the chat. I'm I'm painting in broad strokes here. Um, All right, let's get through. Not that I don't know where they speak which language. Yeah. Uh, now, when they say this is about covert online psyops, what they mean is psychological operations. Right. Right? Do, do you have any context on psychological operations um like just sort of well it's yeah it's like it's a basically a disinformation campaign it's like um yes it is that's an interesting way to put it it's like we're gonna fake fake you out and 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 basically uh put out fake accounts make you think untrue things for our own 
Yeah. I should also point out today, the United States government is actively adding about $83 million to the defense budget for PSYOPs as part of a media campaign they claim is to be anti-Russian media. So they're actively funding $83 million in fake media garbage that we don't even know what it's going to be, but this is in the new defense budget. Right. So they are, they're fully in on all the fake sci, uh, you know, all the psyops campaign, the psychological Clearly. operations. Okay. So here it goes. Twitter files, part eight, number one, how Twitter quietly aided the Pentagon's covert online psyop campaign. Despite promises to shut down covert state run propaganda networks, Twitter documents show that the social media giant directly assisted the U S military's influence operations. Now, in number two, he says that Twitter has claimed for years that they make concerted efforts to detect and thwart government-backed platform manipulation. Here is Twitter testifying to Congress about its pledge to rapidly identify and shut down all state-backed covert operations and deceptive propaganda. So that's just what it says. Like, hey, you know, we are, we take this seriously. We don't want to do this. We always, when we identify inauthentic activity, we shut it down and we share this data. We're on it, basically, is what they're saying. But he says, behind the scenes, Twitter gave approval and special protection to the U.S. online military's online psychological influence operation. Despite knowledge that Pentagon propaganda accounts used covert identities, Twitter did not suspend many for around two years or more. Some still remain active. So some are active now. So in 2017, he says, a CENTCOM, a U.S. Central Command official, sent Twitter a list of 52 Arab language accounts that, quote, we use to amplify certain messages. The official asked for priority service for six accounts, verification from one, and a whitelist availability ability for the other. Uh, so that means, you know, don't block this one. Uh, promote this one and also verify these give them blue check marks because the government's going to start doing some crazy stuff that's on right. these accounts that's right so uh, number five number five so number five the same centcom sent the list twitter officials used to uh, used a tool to grant a special whitelist tag that essentially provides verification status to the accounts without the blue check mark, meaning they are exempt from spam abuse flags, more visible likely to trend on hashtags. The CENTCOM accounts on the list tweeted frequently about U.S. military priorities in the Middle East, including promoting anti-Iran messages, promoting uh, promotion of the Saudi Arabia U.S.-backed war in Yemen, and accurate U.S. drone strikes that claimed to only hit terrorists. Now, we can't read these, but why don't we go ahead and pull them up to show? Because this looks like it comes from this smiley dude here talking about something that obviously the United States wants people in these regions to believe. Um, you know, I think it's also worth noting that in that Graphica uh, Stanford report, it was shown that not only do they do, they do these specific messaged posts, but they also sort of pepper them with local human interest things such as recipes from that region or, you know, wishing right. a happy holiday or things like that. Yeah. And just to be clear, you know, PSYOPs, you know, someone was in the chat saying, no, you guys, or maybe I don't know if he was talking about someone in the chat. PSYOPs is absolutely a disinformation campaign. That's exactly, it's a dissemination of propaganda. That's exactly what it is. And it's been used for hundreds and hundreds of years is, yes. uh, you know, uh, psychological operations. So in fact, the I'll even give you the dictionary definition of PSYOPs in case anyone wants it. And when you're talking with your friends, it's ta tactics intended to manipulate one's opponents or enemies, such as dissemination of propaganda or the use of psychological warfare. Uh, like so th what I was telling you, I was reading a book about Genghis Khan mm -hmm. and how at night he would have his military light many fires. So it looked like the army was twice the size. So it looked like there were twice as many camps. Like that's a psychological, it's a fake out. Yeah. Oh, so is playing blasting. Uh, remember the, you know, like just some simple things like blasting heavy metal music to dis, you know, uh, across the desert using giant speakers like we used in the Gulf War to like throw them off and scare them and, and to intimidate. Like Who did that? The United States did. We blasted, uh, we blasted like heavy metal music across the desert using giant microphones or giant uh, speakers. How do you know that? You know, I know a lot. Huh. You can say. That's, that scares me, just the I idea know. of... 
Imagine if you hear that, like you're like, what's that Metallica coming across the desert? You're like, I don't know. Anyway, I think uh, it would also psych out soldiers, but oh, please. Let's, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, OK, so CENTCOM number seven, CENTCOM then shifted strategies and deleted disclosures of ties to the Twitter accounts. The bios of the accounts changed to seemingly organic profiles. One by I love that this one like used a guy on a boat fishing. Yeah. <laughs> like one bio read Euphrates Pulse. Another used an apparent deep fake profile pic and claimed to be the source of Iraqi opinion. One Twitter official who spoke to me said he feels deceived by the covert shift. Still, many emails from throughout 2020 show that high level Twitter executives were well aware of the Pentagon's vast network of fake accounts and covert propaganda and did not suspend the accounts. And here comes our best friend Jim Baker. We talked about Jim Baker many times because he was censoring the original Twitter files. Uh, Elon Musk exited him from the building and it was shown that he had been scrubbing all kinds of information before he left and before it could be published in these document dumps. So here it is. Twitter lawyer Jim Baker mused in a July 2020 email about the upcoming DOD meeting that the Pentagon used poor tradecraft in setting up its network and we're seeking strategies for not exposing the accounts that are linked to each other or to the DOD or the USG. So basically like they're not doing a good enough job at this sh uh, chicanery. Yeah. Is that how you say that word? Chicanery. I, I think yeah. I say chicanery. Other, others say chicanery. Uh, Michael Monahan in our chat says, yes, when I was a paratrooper, they used giant speakers with the sounds of tanks. That, oh. you think about that. Like you hear like tank sounds. You're like, I don't want to land where those are. There's tanks, even though it's just speakers. They're not actual, not actual tanks. I don't like any of this. Uh, Lee Fang says, number 10, Stacia Cardill, another Twitter attorney, replied that the Pentagon wanted a skiff and may want to retroactively classify its social media activities to obfuscate their activity in this space and that this may represent an overclassification to avoid embarrassment. So again, a skiff. Do you guys know what a skiff is, right? I do it's not. A, it's a, it's like a box. It's like a, it can be a room, but mostly it's like a box where you go in. Um, it's a soundproof. I don't know. Is it like lead lined? Does anyone know? Has anyone been in a skiff? Um, it's a room that's completely protected uh, from like EMPs and electromagnetic interference, and it's a, it's a, it's a like a safe space. And you go in there if you want to have like a private conversation or communicate or not be uh, infiltrated by foreign adversaries, basically use a skiff. They're all over D.C. and the Pentagon and so forth. OK, pull up this email about said skiff. Uh, guess who it says is already doing this? Facebook. Oh, so Jim and Angela and I. Hey, discussed guys, it you know, Facebook's already doing this. We got a skiff for our bad stuff that we're doing with Facebook. I heard from Facebook, Could we they're get securing this? skiffs in DC and for a meeting. Oh, this and, is how deep they are that they have skiffs at Facebook. And the skiff is obviously not that secure if it's being heard about by Twitter counsel, but we've talked about how many ex FBI employees are working inside of Twitter so that they had their own secret Slack channel. So uh, it's possible that this Slack channel or these communications reached down the peninsula to Facebook so they knew what could be mirror and matched and what, how far, deep the, how deep the government could go in each network. Uh, Daedalus says a, yeah, a Daedalus. skiff, Daedalus, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, Daedalus, yeah. Uh, Daedalus says it's a secured, compartmentalized information facility. Yes, it was not on the tip of my tongues. It's been a long day today. It's an, so it's an actual place. It's not like a super secure drive or. No, it's a place and it's it can an be, actual place. yeah, I mean like the situation room at the White House, I think is, is a large skiff. If anyone has been in there, it's a, it's like a, it's a big room um, and it's, Totally protected. Then they have smaller ones that you pop into and do your communications. Anyway, okay. Uh, number eleven. In several other 2020 emails, high-level Twitter executives, lawyers discussed the covert network and even recirculated the 2017 list from CENTCOM, and shared another list of 157 undisclosed Pentagon accounts, and mostly again focused on Middle East military issues. In May 2020 email, Twitter's Lisa Roman emailed the DOD with two lists. One list was accounts previously provided to us, and another list Twitter detected. The accounts tweeted in Russian and Arabic on U.S. military issues in Syria, ISIS, and many also did not disclose their Pentagon ties. 
So they are detecting them themselves and saying, hmm. um, can you confirm that these are yours? And if so, carry on. Yeah, keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Nothing to see here. We're fine. We're all, you know, we're all in the tank together. As you were, soldier. So number 13, many of these secretive U.S. military propaganda accounts, despite detection by Twitter as of 2020, uh, continued tweeting throughout this year and some not suspended until May 2020 or even later, according to records that I reviewed. Okay, here's where comes in the Stanford Internet Observatory and Graphica report. In August of 2022, this report exposed a U.S. military covert prop propaganda network on Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and other apps using fake news portals and deep fake images and memes against U.S. foreign adversaries. We talked about who those were. Russia, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq. Um, who else? I, I can call it up. Uh, but this is exactly what we talked about in early September. Yeah, China, Russia. Mm -hmm. um, so the U.S. propaganda network, he says, relentlessly pushed narratives against Russia, China, and other foreign countries. They accused Iran of threatening Iraq's water security and flooding the country with crystal meth. <laughs> and of harvesting the organs of Afghan refugees. Now, like, he, he says the Stanford report did not identify all of the accounts in the network, but one they did name was the exact same Twitter account CENTCOM asked for whitelist privileges in the 2017 email. So back up in number seven or eight, we showed you that the government said, these are some of the accounts that we are actually working on. And the Stanford report actually had identified one. So there's overlap here, which I'm going to say is about as much proof as I need yeah. that that was an authentic report. It says the account used an AI created deep fake image, uh, so meaning they just, they this, this dude this, doesn't exist. They just created this Jason Bourne looking guy. Uh, yeah. Middle Eastern Jason Bourne looking yeah. guy. Does look real. Isn't that crazy? Like this is what we're dealing with now. Uh, in subsequent reporting, Twitter has cast its an unbiased hero for removing a network of fake user accounts promoting Western pro-Western policy positions. Media covering the story described Twitter as evenly applying its policies and proactive in suspending the, the Pentagon network. The reality is much more murky. Twitter actively assisted CENTCOM's network going back to 2017 and as late as 2020 knew that these accounts were covert, designed to deceive, to manipulate the discourse, a violation of Twitter's policies and promises. They waited years to suspend. So they get to let them get away with it, but they won't let other people, you know, they, they took down the Babylon Bee, which is a satirical comedy website, but they'll... Uh, Bible based. Yeah. Oh, is it? I, I think so. No, I, I just think it was it's a satirical. Like, I think uh, it's Christian based. Um, I, don't hold me to that. I, well, either way. Um, um, now it says Twitter's comms team was closely in touch with reporters working to minimize Twitter's role. When the Washington Post reported on the scandal in August, uh, Twitter officials congratulated each other because the story didn't mention any Twitter employee and focused largely on the Pentagon. So it was like the story said the Pentagon's doing this and you know, I guess no one thought to ask, does Twitter know? Does Facebook know? Do they have a way to stop this? Do they like it? Do they care? Um, it was, yeah, he, they're right. Mostly focused on the fact that the Pentagon does it at all. Number 20, the conduct with U.S. military's covert network stands in stark contrast to how Twitter has boasted about rapidly identifying and taking down covert accounts tied to state-backed influence operations, including Thailand, Russia, Venezuela, and others since 2016. Here's my reported piece with more detail. I was given access to Twitter for a few days. I signed, agreed to nothing. Twitter had no input in anything I did or wrote. The searches were carried out by a Twitter attorney, so what I saw could be limited. And then he writes the piece about Twitter aided the Pentagon in its covert online propaganda campaign. So interesting. But I still do have some questions about The Intercept, because as The Intercept, as we know from Dr. Shiva's reporting on this and the court case, of course, is that they only covered a fraction of what was actually going on. And they knew that there was something much deeper than this. And they only covered the Microsoft piece of this story, which was the backdoor access from, from, these, from the Pentagon, the CIA, the FBI, who had the backdoor portals to these social media companies. Um, and then only reported a piece of it, what's known as a limited hangout. So that you put this piece out there, it doesn't get much more coverage. How much more did The Intercept and Pierre Omidyar and all of those guys actually know what was going on here? Apparently, they knew a lot. That, that's according Clearly. to Dr. Clearly. So why did they not report on it? Like, why did they sit on the story? 
Like, so that's my question. How much of the, how much did the intercept already know about this story and sat on it? That's to me like why I find this so interesting that Lee Fang is covering this part of the Twitter files. Like, oh, we already knew a lot of this. Now that's my opinion. I'm not saying I know for a fact. I'm just saying that's my opinion uh, or, and Dr. Shiva's opinion based on his court case. Well, I just, you know, I just find it, I find it convenient. I, that's all I'm saying. I find it convenient. And to me, <laughs> you and I have been around a long time. There's no, con there's no, you know, there's no coincidences. This kind yes. Of stuff. Um, and how much of this is held back? That's what I want to know. Like Twitter lawyers we're meeting with, how much of the story is a held lot, back? A lot, but we know that about the other files too. And this here is enough hmm. to go on for me because I felt like, like this Graphica piece that was in the Washington Post in August and September did cause quite a wave at the Pentagon. And the Pentagon was then forced, what did they say in response? I have it here. The Pentagon basically said, uh, you know, we're gonna look into how we do that and we're not gonna do it anymore. Um, I wanna find the Pentagon statement on this because they they admitted to it. Um, yeah, they did admit to it. They, they admitted to it. Yeah. And so we know now that this is true. We know it happens. We know it happens in Facebook. Here's a reference to Facebook actively participating in it. And so, uh, you know, it's high time we hear from Facebook now. So that's the next piece of this, right? So again, Representative Jim Jordan uh, this, this afternoon said, we know all of this now about Twitter, right? We're getting all of the deep state involvement and collusion uh, with the FBI, the CIA, DHS, uh, and broadly, more broadly, the Pentagon inside of Twitter. Over 80 different employees actively colluding and co uh, collaborating with Twitter. They said, okay, now, now it's time we find out about Google. And now we find out about it, Facebook. And that's what I really want to know. And that's why it's been interesting. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but YouTube recently updated some of its terms of service. They kind of did this quietly. And uh, Philip and our, our whole team was looking at these terms of service from YouTube, why they suddenly kind of pulled back on some of the censorship that they've been doing lately um, and are allowing more stuff to pop up here on, on YouTube, oddly. And you have to wonder, what kind of meetings are going on right now at these companies, at YouTube, at Google more broadly, uh, at Facebook, at Microsoft, about, hey, see what's happening to Twitter? We better clean up our act. We better get our shit together here. <laughs> or they're burning some files right now. Yeah. Um, get out the shredder. So when the Washington Post published this story uh, about the Pentagon and their sweeping review of clandestine psychological operations, the Undersecretary for Defense for Policy, Colin Call, C-A-H-K-A-H-A-L, Call, mm -hmm. uh, he instructed military commands that engage in psychological operations to, quote, provide a full accounting of their activities by next month after the White House and some federal agencies expect expressed mounting concerns about this. So it's been more than a month. Uh, now is the time absolutely for us to say, hey, Mr. Call, what happened with that? Did you get a full accounting? Did you stop that? Are you continuing to do that? And <laughs> so many more questions, right? Knock it off. Yeah, we've got a lot more questions. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Is that what we want to be doing right now? Are we all good with this? We want to, I mean, I'm still waiting for the COVID files to drop. Like, so this is part eight of sort of the deep state psychological psyops, you know, involvement. Right. But then I don't want to be lectured anymore by the government about what is misinformation, given that the government is yeah. actively perpetuating it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And paying Twitter for it. We know they, $3 they million dollars to do it. They just can't say those words. Uh, so this is outrageous. Um, I hope you join me in this outrage. It feels slightly empowering, but also annoying. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.